Hi everyone, it's Jeff here from Avada. In this video, I'm going to show you how to design a website footer with Avada using Avada layouts. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel to keep up with all the latest videos like this one. And if you don't want to miss one, click the bell icon to get notifications of all new videos on our channel. OK, let's begin. I've downloaded the Virtual Assistant pre-built website here, and let's start by having a look at the footer on this site. I'll just scroll to the bottom here, and this whole blue section is the footer. As we can see, it's a multi-column layout that's really taking advantage of the flexibility and power of the Avada Builder, with an interesting background and content. And if we change to the medium screen view from the responsive tab, we can see the footer is a bit different in this view. And if we change again to small screen view, it changes again. OK, so there's a lot going on here, but instead of breaking it down, I'm going to start again and rebuild it completely from scratch. So let's head to the Avada dashboard, and from here I'm going to head to Layouts, Layout Section Builder, to start a new footer layout section. I'll choose a layout section type, footer, and give it a name. I'll call this one New Global Footer, and I'll click on Create New Layout Section. You can also just hit Enter. Once we build the footer layout section, we're going to add it to the global layout so it's used on every page. If you wanted, you could add your footer to a conditional layout, so it's only used on certain pages. In that way, you could have different footers for different sections of your site. For this video, though, we're going to create a global footer. OK, it opens in Avada Live according to my choice in the Builder options. And if I scroll to the bottom, we can see the starter page for the footer. One of the easiest ways to build a footer is to just import one from Avada Studio. If I open that, we can see a wide range of footers you can import and customize. But for this video, I'm going to rebuild the existing one. So I'll just close that and click on Add Container here to get started. I'm going to start with an empty container, and I will first work on the background. I'll edit the container and head to the Background tab. Now to achieve this look in the footer, both a background color and image has been utilized. So I'll start with the background color and set it to color 7. As I have the pre-built imported here, I have all the global colors in place to reproduce this exactly as it was. Then I'll head to the Image tab and select an image. In this case, the overlay is an SVG file. I'll just select this one called Footer BG1 SVG and insert it. SVGs are helpful files, but are not enabled by default in WordPress. Read our blog post linked below for more info on the subject. OK, we can see our SVG has been imported, but we can't see much of it in the footer yet as we don't have much height on the container. While we're editing this container, I'll just go to the other tabs as there are a few other changes I need to make. I'll start with the General tab, and I need to change this Column Alignment option. As it says in the description, this is for how you want columns to align within rows. And if we pop back to the other footer, we can see along the top here we have three columns in this first row, and we want them to align to the center, so the text is in line with the middle of the footer logo here. So I'll come back and change that Column Alignment to Center. The other defaults are OK here, so I'll move over to the Design tab, as I want to set some padding to this container. I'm going to add 11 VH top and bottom. VH stands for vertical height, and this means that the top and bottom padding will always be 11% of the viewport height. OK, now we can see our container has grown, and we can see our SVG in action. One final thing here is that I will set the container link color to color 4, and on hover to be color 1. There'll be some links in the footer copyright section that want this. OK, now I can move on to the columns. As we saw before, I want three columns across this first row. But they are all going to be custom widths. But to start, I'll click on Add Columns and add three one-third columns here. OK, so let's customize our top three columns. I'll edit the first one and head to the Design tab. And here I want to choose Use Custom Width. Percentage is the default. I'll change the width of this one to 9% as the column is only holding the logo mark and doesn't require much space. While I'm here, I want no column spacing on the right, and no margin top or bottom. Now the column is good to go, I'll add my element. I'm going to add an image element here, and I'll add this SVG called VA Logo. I also want this logo to link to the home page, so I'll scroll down to the Picture Link URL option and head for Dynamic Content, and choose Site URL under Site. And on the Design tab, I'll set an image max width of 69 pixels here. OK, that's my logo. Let's move on to the next column. This one is going to show a menu, 
but let's set the column options first. On the Design tab I'm going to set the Width option first, so I will choose Use Custom Width and set this one to 50%. I'll leave the default column spacing on left and right, but again set the top and bottom margins to 0 pixels. Alright, so let's add our element. And here I'm going to use the Menu element. There is only one menu to display on this site, so it's already chosen that. It's almost impossible to see because of the colour at the moment, so I'll just head to the Main tab and go straight to the bottom and change the main menu item text colour to colour 1 first of all, so we can see the menu. OK, that's a bit better. Let's come back to the General tab. Here I'll just adjust the transition time to 500, and set the space between the main menu and any submenus to be 10 pixels. That's all I need to do here. I'll just go back to the Main tab now and work my way down. I'll set a minimum height of 0 pixels to make the menu's height as small as possible, and I'll set the main menu typography to use the lead set. And I'll just remove that line height. With the main menu item padding, I'll add 5 pixels top and bottom here. And right below this, I'll set the main menu item spacing to 40 pixels. OK, that's starting to look like a menu, but let's tweak it just a bit more. I'll start by changing the main menu hover transition to center horizontal. Now down in the main menu item styling section, I've already changed the main menu item color to white but I will also add a 2 pixel bottom border to the menu items. But I'm going to leave the border colour transparent. This is because I'm also going to add a 2 pixel bottom border on hover, and without this, there would be a little jump in the menu when mousing over it. So I'll head to the hover active state of the border size option, and add the 2 pixel bottom border again, but this time I'll set the hover border colour to be colour 1. OK, that should be good for that tab. Of course, I can always come back to fine tune anything. I'll head to the submenu tab now as there is a submenu under the services link and we need to style that one. The first change I need to make is in the submenu typography, and here I will just make the font size 17 pixels. Then a bit further down, I'll find the submenu border radius option, and I'll just round this off a bit with 6 pixels all around. A couple more things on this tab there's the submenu separator color, I'll just make that color 7. And then in the color options, I'll set the alpha channel to minus 90 to make it almost transparent. For the submenu background color, I'll leave it as is, but on hover, I'll set it to color 4. And then I'll change the submenu hover text color to be color 1, and on the normal state, I'll choose color 8. Yeah, that's looking good. OK, moving on to the mobile tab, let's just move to medium screens on the responsive tab so we can get a better idea of what these options are doing. I'm going to leave the Collapse to Mobile breakpoint at Medium, which is why we can see the menu has collapsed to a mobile one, but I'll just change the Mobile Menu Trigger Background Colour to be Transparent, and the Mobile Menu Trigger Text Colour to be Colour 1. We've also got some custom icons in this website, so I'm going to go to the VA tab on the Mobile Menu Trigger Expand icon and set that one, and likewise with the Collapse icon. I'll set the Mobile Menu Trigger font size to 25 pixels, and the Mobile Menu Trigger Horizontal Align to Flex End. Then I'll set the Mobile Menu Trigger Bottom Margin to 20 pixels, and adjust the Minimum Height to 55 pixels. OK, almost there. I'll change the Mobile Menu Separator Colour to Colour 1, and I'll head to the Active State of the Mobile Menu Background Colour, and Mobile Menu Text Colour, and make them Colour 4 and Colour 1. Now our menu looks a little strange in the middle here, and on medium and small screens, I'm going to change that. But before I do, let's come back to Desktop View and edit that third column. Here I'm going to change the Content Layout option to Row, as I want more than one element in here, and I want them to be in line. And I'll change the Content Alignment to Flex End as well. The only other thing I need to do in this tab is to turn the visibility off for mobile, as on mobile this column will be hidden. On the Design tab, I need to change its size. So I'll use a custom width, and set this to 41%. That now fills up the rest of the row. I'll leave the column spacing, but I'll set the bottom margin to 0 pixels. OK, to the content. I'll add a button element first up. I want this button to be clickable as a phone number, so I'll just paste my code in here in the button URL. And in the button text, I'll paste the number as it will show. Moving to the Design tab, I'm going to give this button a custom style and they are all going to be transparent. So I'll make both the active and hover states 
of both the start and end color to be transparent. The text color is OK, but I'll change the hover color to color 4. Scrolling down a bit, I'm also going to change the size of the button to extra large and set 20 pixels right margin. I also need an icon, so again I'll go to the VA tab and this time I want the headphones icon. OK, that looks good. Next to this, I want another button. I'll set the button URL to the contact page and I'll add some text in the button text field. Again, on the design tab, I'm going to give it custom colors. I want this to be color 8 for the start and end colors. And on the hover state, I'll make them color 1. For the button text color, on the hover state, I'll make that color 8. And finally, I'll make the button size extra large again. All right, that's our top row. Let's now sort the responsive views for this row. I'll go to medium screen view, and here I want the order and size of these columns to be different. They are currently inheriting the large screen sizes. The first column is fine, so I'll edit the second one, and on the design tab I'll set a custom size for this column in medium screen view only to be 10%, and I'll set the order to be 2. This now jumps to the end. And I'll edit what is now the middle column, and again on the design tab I'll set a custom width for medium screen of 81%, and set the order to be 1, as the first column has an order of 0. Yeah, that's what I want here. And now to small screen view. I've already turned the visibility of the button column off for this view, so all I have to do here is edit each column. And for small screen view, let's make both of these columns one half. And for small screen view, I will also adjust the container padding. I'll edit the container, and on the design tab, let's override the padding for small screens to be 5VH top and bottom. Beautiful. There's some powerful responsive design going on there. I'll just come back to large screen view, and now let's add the next column. This one is going to be a three-fifths column on large screens, so I'll go to the last column and add it from there. I'll just edit that column and go to the Design tab and set the top and bottom margin to 40 pixels, but that's all I need to adjust on the column. So now I'll add the first element, which is going to be a title element. I'll paste in my title, and then head to the Design tab. I'll change this to a H2, and change the font to color 1 so we can see it and I'll set the bottom margin to 5VH. And I'll toggle the responsive options to small screen here. And for that screen size, I'll set the bottom margin to 45 pixels instead. Okay, that's good. So now under this, I need another button. So I'll add that. This one's going to link to the About page. So I'll just set that. And in the button text, I'll add, What is a VA exactly? And then head to the Design tab. Another button, another set of custom colors. This time I want it to be white at first, so I'll set these to color 1. The hover color defaults are good, so I just need to set the button text color to color 7. And again, I'll just scroll down and change the button size to extra large. OK, nearly finished. We just need to add our bottom column, and then check for any more responsive changes. So under this, I'll add a 1-1 one -one column, and I will add a text block element to it. Let's just start by going to the Design tab and setting the font size to 14 pixels and the font color to color 1. Now back on the General tab, for the content here we are going to use Dynamic Content. I'll click the Dynamic Content icon and scroll down and choose Date from the Other section. I'll change the format to Y as I only want to show the year. And then in the Before section I'll add a Copyright Notice and the Start Year. And in the After section I'll add the rest of the Copyright Footer Code. All right, that looks great. And for large screen view, our footer is done. But now let's just go into the responsive editing mode and check the layout for other screen sizes. I'll start with medium. OK, close, but no cookie. The order of these columns is not correct. The logo is fine, but I'll check the others. OK, for the title column, this needs to be 3. And for the footer copyright, this should be 4. Yeah, that's much better. Now let's have a look at the small screen view. Our button column is not showing, as we set the visibility of that to off in small screens, but apart from that it looks great. Check out our link docs and videos to find out more about the responsive editing mode and responsive option sets. OK, that's it. Let's just check this footer out in action. I'll just save my work first. Now I'll go to the Layout Builder, and in the Global Layout I'll disconnect the Global Footer, and then add our new Global Footer. Now let's just look at our finished footer. 
I'll come back to our front page and refresh. And now I will just go into preview mode here and scroll down. And there's our rebuilt footer. As we can see, it's just like the original. The submenus are styled as we wanted, and all the buttons have their custom colors, etc. If we change to medium screen, the layout changes and the size and order of the columns is different. And if we go to small screen, it changes again. Most footers won't be as complex as this one, but it's a great example of just how powerful custom layout sections can be, and the flexibility and power they offer by being able to use the full potential of the Avada Builder and Avada Layouts. Okay, this concludes our video on how to design a website footer with Avada. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel to keep up with all the latest videos, and if you have any questions or need assistance, please create a support ticket and our team will gladly assist you. As always, we want to thank you for choosing Avada.